Hello, hi, how are you? And welcome to another podcast by George. Well, this podcast is going to deal with some timely news, and it's, I don't know, not good news, kind of surprised me, actually, but on the campus of my alma mater, Drake University, some redneck crackers have stuck some notes under some students' doors there, racism, of course, saying uh, deplorable, threatening things, and then also, over the past week or so, robocalls, which originated, I believe, out of the state of Idaho, directed at students at Drake University. Well, the students got together and themselves, uh, they invited faculty, but they put this thing together themselves, 800 to 1,000 students, and I just had to go check it out and bring uh, some of the uh, audio back for you to listen to. The first speaker uh, that I have here for, now there are a lot of speakers, this is uh, just the first one that we're going to listen to, Ayana Anderson. She's the president of the African Student Association, the ASA. And uh, Ayana wanted to thank everybody for participating, everybody that turned out, all the organizers, but she also wanted to make sure, and this was a theme that ran uh, through the rally, uh, that just being there wasn't enough. Let's give Ayana a listen here. We're here today rallying against these hateful messages, and I want to thank you all for coming, but your job isn't done. Today is not the last day to rally, it's just the beginning. All of us make up Drake community, so all of us have to work diligently, not only to speak out, but to act. Your posters are great. I love to see the little, not the little, the big things on Greek Street. I love to see the doors of um, faculty that were painted black and had very um, reassuring messages on it, but words, Words are a lot, but actions speak louder than words. This is not the first time that this has happened on my, our campus. I've been here only three years, and this must be the, the sixth reported incident. There are many unreported incidents. This is not the first time, and this may not be the last time, because racists are everywhere and they will hide everywhere, but we cannot, we have to make sure that they're not comfortable here. They cannot be comfortable putting stuff under our doors. They cannot be comfortable writing the end man on our walls. They cannot be comfortable with swastikas around our campus. That's Ayana Anderson, president of the ASA, the African Student Association at Drake University. And you know, as I looked around the crowd, and it was kind of chilly out there today, it was over the noon hour at Drake University. Great turnout. I, I think the official count was 800, but I mean, it was a sea of people out there, and they were all in support, and there was a lot of unity and a lot of good things that were said. And uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not just trying to portray uh, any negativism here, and I, I don't think I am, but here's where the thing comes in that's a little different from when I was uh, a younger or a kid. When people got together like that at a rally, um, uh, at a protest, it was always uh, kind of one voice. Everybody was in support of one another, and certainly no one would ever criticize anyone or tell them what to do. Well, that's not necessarily the case at this rally. And I'm not so sure that it isn't uh, the different uh, in the eras and in the ages. I've noticed young people uh, are not reluctant uh, to criticize uh, us oldsters, but they're also not reluctant to criticize each other. I mean, if the shoe fits anyway, it, it seems that way to me. And uh, Ayana had a little bit of uh, cajoling there for folks, but then 
Molia Williams for the Coalition of Black Students uh, was up right after that. And what she said was even more to the point. She was not impressed by the turnout. I think I've seen more people at the Relays concert. For those of you guys who don't know me, my name is Malia Williams. I am the president of the Coalition of Black Students and I'm a senior here at Drake University. Every year that I've been here, it's been an incident just like this. And you know what's worse about this one? This isn't just a message of hate. It's not just a message of intolerance. This was a message of violence. It's bigger than them not wanting us here at this campus. It's them not wanting us here on this earth, in this country, in this society. And that's what you guys aren't understanding. This is bigger than them not, not, not wanting us here on this campus. This is them wanting our lives. Everybody is thankful that you guys are here. And I'm not saying that I'm not. But why you only show up in times of crisis? Why y'all? Why do y'all only want to say something on social media when you're going to get 30 shares and 300 likes? Why is that? Why do you only come when someone asks you to? Do you guys understand how serious this is? This is a threat on lives. I don't know. I'm not going to say what the note says, but those of you guys have seen it. It's bigger than just, you know, they don't want us here. Solidarity. They asked me to come up here and talk about solidarity and being unified as a campus and as a community. And I'm all for that. But it's bigger than just being here at the rallies. It's being there for those students. It's being there in times of happiness. It's being there in times of peace. It's bigger than your community coming to join with our community. It's about intermingling with the communities. That's how there's going to be change. Things like this happen, yes, behind closed doors, yes, in little petty notes, but it happens because people feel comfortable doing it. If we had a community where everybody supported each other, if we had a community when people didn't only show up when bad stuff happened, people wouldn't have to do stuff like this because we would be tolerant of each other. We would be understanding. We would be respectful of other people's views. This rally was great. We appreciate everything that the administration, the students, the different organizations have been doing for us. We really do appreciate it. But the, but the sad thing about it, about it is, is that our voices weren't enough. We couldn't say, help, I'm hurting. Somebody has a threat out for my life. And that get this much attention. That it gets this much concern. So yes, thank you but also realize that it's a problem that my voice wasn't enough. Because honestly, I'm tired of talking. I'm tired of everywhere I go, I got to be the person. I got to wait for you to talk to me when, you know, until something bad happens in my community. I don't matter any other time. I'm tired. It's not my job anymore. These past 200 years haven't been enough. The little bit that they do put in the history books isn't enough. It's not my job anymore. I'm done talking. 
This is my fourth year doing this. And you know what? You may look at my face and I don't look excited and I don't look happy because I'm tired of doing this. I do this every year. Every year. I still have school. I still have other organizations. I have to work. But I'm here. I'm sacrificing my education, my mental health, because y'all don't know how to talk, because y'all don't know how to stand up for others. I know this may be harsh, but this is what you need to hear. Because the reality is, my life on this campus that I pay to go to, that I stayed up all night to make sure I stayed enrolled in, my life's in danger here. And that's not okay. Well, that's a great perspective. It's an interesting perspective, and it's hers. And after all, she is the one that was being targeted. And I guess those uh, notes in particular... Uh, were uh, extremely threatening and violent in in nature. Uh, the robocall stuff, I don't know what that was. That's just a bunch of cracker nutitude, I think. But, um, I mean, she owns it. She deserves uh, her point of view. Well, like I said, it was a great rally. I don't know if you've been to rallies, if you've ever protested, if you've ever carried a sign. I've been there. I've done that. Uh, my wife and I both, we've been to uh, rallies where I, we were uh, one of a handful of people that attended, and it was gratifying and uh, rewarding and encouraging to see such a huge turnout on the uh, campus of old uh, Drake U. And uh, the closing speaker... Uh, was an accomplished orator, somebody that really knows how to uh, work a crowd and uh, really knows how to get to the point. And uh, this was great stuff. This is Iowa House Representative Abdul Samad uh, talking to the crowd and telling them to get up off their duff and do something more than just even what they were doing today, which I thought was uh, admirable. But there's a lot more than that that needs to be done. Here's Representative, Iowa Representative, Abdul Samad. Let me be real clear. You ain't got to clap for me. You ain't got to clap because my thing is, your clapping doesn't mean a lot to me if you didn't do something a week ago. Your clapping doesn't mean a lot to me if you don't take yourself out of your comfort zone from this day on and reach out to one another and recognize the differences so that our similarities have substance. Your claps don't mean nothing if you go back to campus and talk about boys sound the good. Nobody's here to sing a tune. Nobody's here just to sound good. We're here to have a revolution on the campus of Drake University. A revolution of change, a mind change. Because don't let a handful of individuals who question the old manhood and womanhood because they don't have nothing get 15 minutes of fame when you will change the world, when you will make a difference. But you can't make it a difference if y'all don't stand together. If you don't recognize this sister's pain, you can't make a difference. If you don't recognize your own pain, because we do have cultural differences. I'm not worried about the color of the skin, but I do want to learn your cultural difference. But I want you to also to understand that if you deal with just, as you have said, which I kind of smile that we're going to take care of our people of color. What the hell does that mean? How are you going to take care of your people of color? I take care of my dogs. But if we take care of each other as human beings and recognize our cultural difference, then we make a difference. Because if black folk here, if you don't recognize your own value, don't expect whites to recognize your value. Whites, if you don't recognize the value of the human and the student you have on this campus, don't come telling me you're going to take care of your colored students. We 
we got to take care of each other. And if you're not talking about white privilege, you're not solving the problem. If we're not looking at it holistically, we're not going to solve the problem. We're not going to be able to come together. We're not going to be able to stand together. What we will do in another few months is come back for a rally after the snow leaves. You heard individuals talk about, sisters, that every year I'm up here. To have a revolution, you have to do it today and say, no more. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. No more. No more. If a letter comes and comes under somebody's door, that means 150 letters goes in support of what Drake is to stand for. You don't turn around and let somebody send you two letters, and then y'all freak out. You stand up and do what you have to do. And I appreciate it, don't get me wrong. I appreciate the street being painted black. But boy, would it look even better if you had Nelson Mandela's picture up there. Would it look better if you had Fannie Lou Hamer's picture up there. It would look better if you were asked one of those 19 black judges who are all women who are elected in Texas. Would it look better if some of your students, the students that got the letters, if their picture was up there? That's how you show your support. Anybody can paint a street black. I think it's a great idea. But let's take it to another level. Paint it black now, but put them pictures up later. But put there that people stand up. You are standing on people's shoulders standing in. People are doing rallies before you even a twinkle in your daddy's or mama's eye. They've been marching before you even thought about coming to Drake University. They were giving their lives so you could stand here today and verbally masturbate. Somebody told me to keep it clean, and I am. <laughs> because what happens is, if you feel good leaving here, and you don't do nothing, and then all you do is verbally masturbate, go have a cigarette. <laughs> You have to stand up to make a difference. That means, not only that, how many of you reached out to the community past 21st Street? How many have reached out to the community that just surrounds you to be able to say to them babies up there, I want you to come to Drake, because Drake is great, because we haven't reached out to them. That means you stand up. Drake is an awesome college. Drake University is the heart of a community. Ah, that's great stuff. I wish I could play it all for you, but time uh, just doesn't allow. That's Iowa House Representative Abdul Samad speaking at Drake University in this anti-racism rally. And uh, by the way, what he's talking about there with painting the street black, they have a tradition at Drake. A portion of the street at Drake uh, is uh, painted. Uh, the uh, students, uh, their groups, associations, frat houses, and all that stuff, they get out there and paint part of the street. And this year, they said, because of these attacks, let's paint the whole thing black. And that's a great idea. But he's got an even better idea. He's uh, talking about putting up pictures of, of uh, or painting pictures of Nelson Mandela and others, including the students that got the attacks at Drake University. I could be great to see uh, a painting of uh, Nelson Mandela uh, for triple six four uh, out there in the street for Drake University. I mean, sometimes these rallies uh, come up with uh, great things and great ideas, and he's a great speaker. And uh, I don't know, it's just it's really it's really good stuff. And if you want to hear it all, next time they have a rally, <laughs> go to it, get a sign, walk. Uh, you'll enjoy it. It's it's well worth it. Um, and I know everybody listening to this podcast, anyway, supports the anti-racism message. So I just wanted to share that with you and have a little timely news. And by the way, the audience uh, for my podcast is growing. 
And I want to encourage everybody, uh, and I don't do it often enough, and my wife is always on me to do this, but like the podcast on Facebook, follow us there, follow us on Twitter, um, go to the webpage, Podcast by George, uh, Spotify, iTunes, we're on iHeartRadio now, everything's going great, <laughs> but I want to make sure that everybody gets an opportunity to hear great stuff like what we just heard, and by uh, sharing the love, so to speak, by getting the word out about the podcast, everybody can get these kinds of messages, so... Thanks again. Uh, A little timely news, a little update for you today. We'll be back very soon. Thanks for listening in. That's another podcast by George.